So we just slide it up, and now we got a nice little shadow, okay, that kind of follows along with what he's doing. Okay, pretty cool. If you blur it out slightly before you pull the key, it'll make for a much smoother edge. So already you kind of see the reflection of the window, right? By setting the glow on an adjustment layer, when we brighten it up, it'll cover over the tops of all the layers, which is a very, very cool effect that kind of makes it seem like the fire is coming around them. And we're gonna change the transfer mode here to overlay but I definitely want to try to give it more of a third dimension. Okay, so you're thinking to yourself, well, this looks pretty good, but you know, I didn't pay good money for a tutorial to show me how to draw an outline of a muzzle fire. So I'm gonna hit apply. Tracking data has applied itself. Hi, Andrew Kramer here. What we have here is this footage, of this guy in front of a green screen, and uh, that is a MP5 for those of you who are interested. It's an airsoft gun made out of very high quality plastic, so uh, yeah, very dangerous, I can assure you. The first thing we're going to do is take this footage and drag it out to the composition area and make a new composition. Um, I should point out, um, this is actually my good friend, Sam Loya, who uh, helped me out tremendously in this whole uh, training DVD process and creation. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and thank him for all the time and uh, help he put into uh, making this authentic. I mean, look at this face. Yeah. Next thing we're going to do is select the layer and go up to Effects, King, Key Light. And... This is the plugin we're going to use to pull a good mat from this green footage. So, first thing we're going to do is pick the color green. Okay. And uh, if I toggle this transparency, um, you can see already uh, things are starting to happen. All right. Let's go ahead and skip a few of these settings. And first thing I want to focus on is this screen pre blur. And basically, what this does is blurs the mat before it pulls the key from it. So, if we go to the screen mat in the uh, viewing options, uh, we, we play with this. You can see it kind of blurs it out. And the benefit of this is when you're working with DV footage especially, the edges aren't perfect and they can be uh, blocky and um, you know have artifacts. And so if you blur it out slightly before you pull the key, it will it'll make for a much smoother edge and it won't crawl and uh, look all crazy. So that's obviously a good thing. Now the next thing I want to go to is the screen mat. And we have a few settings in here I want to look at. Let's go and change the view momentarily to the screen matte view. And this is the black and white view. Everything that's white is opaque and everything that is black is going to be transparent. And we have some gray area here which we need to work on. So the clip black will basically bump up the tolerance for the black and just kind of cut that out of the uh, mix here. And likewise we have some gray here in the white and I want to go ahead and clip that down. So that's pretty Good. Let's go with 35 and we'll make it, say, 75. 
And if we switch back to the final result and we zoom in here, you can see we actually have a pretty nice edge all around. But we're going to go and take it a few steps further. If we need to, we can actually adjust the mat um, basically globally and you know shrink it or grow it. I'm actually going to shrink it down 0.5 pixels just to make sure we don't have a weird edge. Key Light is actually a very powerful plugin. It's doing a lot of things uh, for us, basically automatically. And one of the things it's doing for us is uh, spill suppression. If we go to the view and we change this to intermediate result, um, a normal keyer will basically leave all this in. That is just basically the spill from the, the green background. And what Key Light does is, if we go back to the final result, it actually tints those greenish pixels, uh, a color that you, you pick, um, and default is, is gray, which is kind of a neutral color. So it kind of gives it a uh, non-tinted look, which is, which is pretty nice. But since we're working with DV footage, there's a few things, a uh, few workarounds, if you will. What I'm going to do is switch the replace method to hard color. And that basically is just a little bit lighter blending with the green color that we're suppressing. I'm going to change this color also to like a grayish green. And the reason I'm doing that is just to get a little bit closer to the original green because of the low quality of uh, DV footage, we can run into uh, some artifacting with the color sampling. So the closer you get it to green, the less artifacting, but obviously you want to be far enough away so that the tint isn't there. So this uh, this color seems to do it for us. All right, the next thing we're going to do is uh, add our background. So back to the project, I'm going to take this background picture that we have, which is actually taken with a 20D in some dark, crazy alley. So let's go ahead and uh, put this into our background. So I'm going to drag it down here underneath our layer and I'm going to hit Alt Home to line that up. And zooming out here with the mouse, uh, rolling the mouse button back, uh, we can see it's a huge picture. It's like 8 megapixels. Well, we're going to scale it down and uh, I'm going to zoom in here uh, maybe like that. Okay, maybe a little bigger. All right, we're working with progressive scan footage. Now, sh if we were working with interlaced footage, we would possibly have some more artifacting and, and um, noisier edges. Um, and one solution for that is a matte choker. And if we go, if we select our uh, green screen footage, we go up to effects, matte, simple choker, uh, we get this really great effect and basically geometrically smooths out the edges. Uh, let's go ahead and change the choke matte amount to, say, 0.75. Uh, let's go maybe 1.5. Okay, and you can see it kind of shrinks the edges just a little bit if I shut this on and off, but it cleans them up uh, dramatically. Let's just do one even number. Okay, the next thing we need to do is try to match our foreground footage with the background. Basically, you can see our background is kind of greenish and he is uh, you know, in a in a studio in front of a green screen. So we need to somewhat get these colors to uh, get a little bit closer uh, together. What I'm going to do is with the SAM layer selected, I'm going to go to Effects, Color Correction, and down to Levels. And I'm going to analyze a few things here first. You'll notice in the shadows of our uh, of our SAM layer is uh, the shadows are black. You know, they're they're gray, maybe a little warm, but in our background layer. The shadows are greenish. Um, so what we want to do is try to match that somewhat. So I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm actually going to move the input black over just a little bit. And you can see that starts to tint it kind of a greenish in the uh, in the shadow area. It's still not perfect so we're going to go ahead and uh, come over to the blue channel. And another thing we notice is the highlights in the background are very yellowish green. What we're going to do is we zoom in here to the edge here. We're going to change the blue output white. And if we just slide this over, uh, you'll see that we kind of can start matching that color. Now we could overdo it a little bit, you know, and say, okay, well, that's just foreground lighting, but we just want to get it to look, yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, by the way, this is actually widescreen footage, so if we get a little space here, we can toggle the pixel aspect ratio and uh, you know, see what the actual composition is going to look like.